Funky Kingston and this kind of Miss Kingston. Hi, I guess I had to go to Europe, so that's one of the reasons why it's taken me so long to do the videos as well as the complexity of the videos it's going to be a very quick trip i was always using frankfurt airport as my you know like central point to change flights it's so strange to be here now after you know after such a long break of over two years not traveling anywhere because of covid oh no it's closed my favorite restaurant is closed. Oh no. Oh, they closed it down. So this one closed down? Yeah, you see? Yeah, it was yeah. since COVID. Yeah. Right, each time when I was flying through Frankfurt, I would just have a quick lunch at that restaurant because it has like a best view. And now they're closed down. What a shame. The other places are closed too. <laughs> she now has a mask too. Oh dear. <laughs> When it turned out I had no choice but urgently fly to Ukraine, I recorded some footage in my studio in Jamaica just a few hours before going to the airport and then tried to use every minute I had in between the flights and on the airplane to work on my next video. It was actually the fake diplomat video, which went viral on my channel. But here is a fan fact. Post-production for that video was mostly done in the air. <laughs> All right, Ukraine now. Oh, gosh. Oh, just look at that line. <sighs> when I travel to Ukraine, I usually rent a car at the airport. It's a bit tricky because there is a change in climate, change in time zone, change in side of driving and where the wheel is. And in Ukraine, most cars come with manual transmission. So if you're traveling from Jamaica and you wish to drive in Ukraine, keep this in mind. Okay. It's the capital of Ukraine, one of the oldest cities in Eastern Europe. It has the population of 2.9 million, almost precisely like the entire country of Jamaica. Kiev is recognized as the greenest metropolis of Europe, so you'll find trees and parks everywhere, absolutely stunning green hills and the river. All of this looks gorgeous, that is, in summer. 
But in winter, it's a completely different story. Sure, people can film the beauty of winter looking like a fairy tale, but in reality, it's just grey. There is no colour for half of the year, which I've always found to be rather depressive. Bring souvenirs from Jamaica. It's always better to get authentic things, not the magnets and other imported stuff. I have a video on my channel about the souvenirs, which ones are the best to bring and where to get them. But because it was one of my first videos, it didn't get as many views as some of my newer ones. So please check it out if you haven't watched it yet. All right, guys. So we are in Kiev, Ukraine. I'm going to take you to a few places you know just to get an idea what Kiev looks like in winter and I have to do it fast while there is still sunshine and a daytime because it gets dark really early in winter some somewhere around 4 p.m. it's already dark you know one day left before flying back home to Jamaica so uh, yeah I just thought I'm gonna take a little bit of footage for you I've booked an Airbnb in this house. You see, it's huge and it's a, it's a thing in Ukraine. You know, we have these blocks of flats. This house is pretty old and still like Soviet structure. I originally thought when I go to Ukraine, I would film a lot of things for you and try to meet up with a few Jamaicans who live in Ukraine. But I had only seven days in Kiev, six of which I spent solving all sorts of problems. So I basically had just one day to walk around and quite some time in traffic jams and hence a lot of recording is from a car you see it's super slippery all of this is ice so i'm just walking on ice <laughs> and now i'm going to be driving on ice <laughs> an old soviet uh, block of flats all right and there you can see the new ones at the back you see so the new ones yeah they, they look more fancy see this one is a newer one and we call it uh, Muravieniki, it's like the home for ants, you know, because people live like ants in their sh like little shells. So, the first thing in winter, you need to warm up the car, you know. So, it's gonna warm up for about five minutes or so. my tea from yesterday right each car rental comes with this which is pretty awesome so I don't need to buy it this is not a problem but on other days the car freezes and you have to wait until it melts or scratch the ice off windows for that purpose if i have no tools i would usually use an old card like bank card or membership card when i lived in ukraine my car was always parked outside because i didn't have a garage nearby so i would usually go outside half an hour earlier every morning to clean the car from ice and snow and then come back home to pick up the kids and drive them to school remember in ukraine most people live in these blocks of flats rather than in houses like many people do in jamaica which means parking your car is a bit tricky i seriously cannot understand why some people in ukraine are complaining about wearing masks I mean, this is not because of COVID, that's because my nose is freezing. All right, you see when the road is like this, it doesn't look like much, but it's actually all ice covered in sand. So they just put sand over the ice. So, you know, it's possible to at least have some grip. Yeah, so when you see this, you know, dirty kind of snow, that's not dirty because of power fumes and things but it's because they throw sand on it. The other problem with this road is making turns. You kind of have to accelerate when you're making a turn, otherwise 
uh, the, the car might go in an unexpected direction. Let me just do that. Okay, this is better. I remember when people were watching my video, uh, Tropical Storm Grace, and they were worried that, you know, I was driving in tropical storm and it was raining and they oh no, it's so difficult to drive in tropical storm. having spent half of my driving career um, on ice and in snowstorms and things like that it's just heavy rain is not an issue I mean hurricane would have been a problem yeah but tropical storm you see in Kiev to get from one place to another that should take about 10 minutes you might find yourself stuck in traffic for like one hour maybe two hours that's why, if you come to Kiev, it makes total sense to use our amazing underground system that has some of the most beautiful metro stations in the world. That is provided you are okay with becoming rather familiar with thousands of strangers. And I wasn't okay because of Covid, so this trip, traffic jams for me. You know when there is sunshine and if you go in rural areas in Ukraine, when the weather is good, and by good I mean there is sun, uh, it's very beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's like a fairy tale, you know, with, with the snow and everything. And it's especially beautiful when you're inside a house with a fireplace or <laughs> something, you know, where, where it's really warm and you just look at this beauty from behind the window. <laughs> There is a thing in Kiev with city underground. We have these subways all over the city. Sometimes they are just the extension of the entrance to underground stations. Other times they are just subways to cross the road, which were turned into these streets filled with shops often selling cheap goods and services. Sometimes they are turned into a luxury shopping mall and I'll show one of them later in the video. But now let's go to a place to have lunch. Check this out, that flag over there. It's a flag of Barbados. What is it doing here? What the? <laughs> what? <laughs> what is the Barbados flag doing here? I'm just wondering, cause you know, <clears throat> This is what Ukrainian flag looks like. And this is our coat of arms. I wonder if they saw Barbados flag and thought, oh, that's like two together. <laughs> you see, this is what it looks like now. Not much, but in summer it's really nice because these things are green. Like all of this is like covered in green, uh, pretty plants and uh, yeah, but now it's just so deserted. But wait until we go inside. Ukrainian food is exceptionally good and extremely diverse. I'm talking about 2,000 different dishes. This is just a number of recipes in my personal cookbook. And I'm a person who doesn't even like cooking. The problem with Ukrainian cuisine, however, is that it's rather difficult to master. So the same dish can look and taste quite differently and either be delicious or not depending on who cooks it. When I go to Ukraine in summer, I'll be able to share more on the topic. But for now, we're just having this. Tiny parties. <laughs> you see, we have them too. <laughs> They're very different though. And this is with um, mushrooms. The common bear this is cheese with mushrooms. Just taste it, let, let me try and let you know. Mm. It is so gentle. It's um, chicken soup. 
it says beer is good thing regardless the weather <laughs> Well, not sure about cold beer. <laughs> Definitely not, thank you. <laughs> Obviously the reason for an urgent trip to Ukraine for Christmas um, is not a positive one. I just got some sad news. My grandmother passed away, unfortunately. She was 87 and she had an incredible life. And she was my last relative in Ukraine. I don't have anyone left here anymore. And um, this is a central square where all the events happened in 2014 with almost 100 people being shot. I've noticed there have been quite a few comments on my channel when people find out that I'm originally from Ukraine. They write things like Putin is right by Ukrainian border now with all the soldiers and they're going to attack any minute. Guys, it's not news. The current conflict has been going on from 2014 and Russian troops have been by the border of Ukraine on and off for the whole eight years. Nothing changed. Why is it news now? Well, maybe because news about Trump are no longer relevant, I guess, and people are getting tired of COVID stories all the time. So journalists have to come up with some other drama in the news to ensure your fear and stress levels are high. So they go, what was going on before pandemic? Oh, Ukraine, right. Let's look at that. All those Russians are planning to attack. It's all the fault of Putin. Unless you're a Russian journalist, of course, then you also look at Ukraine, but with a different agenda. You write things like, it's all the fault of Americans. They want to bring NATO and use Ukraine to attack Russia. So Russia has no choice but defend itself. And that's how they see it. Kiev was built around 5th century, and by the 9th century it became the capital of Kievan Rus, which was the first East Slavic state. In the 12th century it was the prince of Kievan Rus, Yuri Dolgoruki, who ordered to build the town of Moscow. And the word Russia comes from the word Rusland, that is, the land of Rus people, from Kievan Rus. So those people were the original Russians, with a capital in Kiev. However, Kievan Rus was completely destroyed during the Mongol invasions in 1200s. And when towns were rebuilt eventually, it was the newly formed Kingdom of Moscow that became the capital of the country we know today as Russia. Kiev is called the mother of all Russian cities, mainly because it's also the place where Christianity began in Russia. So the origins of Russia are in Kievan Rus, with the main city Kiev, which is now the capital of Ukraine. And as you can imagine, some are not particularly happy about that part of history, and some are even trying to rewrite it in some way. All of this suddenly became important in 2014, when Crimea was annexed from Ukraine with a claim that Crimea has always been a part of Russia. Look at the origins. Well, how far do you want to look? Because this is the map of Kievan Rus. So should Kiev now claim the northeastern part of Russia, including Moscow, because it's always been the land of Kiev. <laughs> and this is just the first layer of many, many layers of the conflict between societies that are now called Russia and Ukraine. As you can see, it's not exactly recent. It's been going on and on for centuries. So when people ask me, what do I think about it? The answer is, I don't. Because what's the point? 
Look, every country has its own problems. People who live in Ukraine, both Ukrainians and foreigners, have to deal with these problems on an everyday basis and look for solutions. Here in Jamaica, we have our own set of problems, and people who live here, or want to live here, both Jamaicans and immigrants, including myself, should focus on solutions for Jamaica. Then, of course, there are global problems, environmental, poverty, and all the important stuff that is relevant everywhere. So why should I waste my time thinking and worrying about geopolitics where I can change absolutely nothing, when instead I can focus on things I can change, something that I'm interested in and have the skills to make at least some kind of positive influence? How is any of this relevant to Jamaica? It isn't, but Jamaicans kept asking me about Ukraine, so here comes a short personal vlog. I just wish I, I get a chance to come to Kiev in summer, like properly, and do some really good filming for you guys, because I would really love to share um, that Ukraine is a wonderful country. To be honest, guys, I don't care that much about politics and other things, and because there are a lot of issues in Ukraine because of that. But I would have never left Ukraine if not for the weather. It's seriously, that was the main, what do you call it, like push factor that made me search for a different place to live because I just can't stand the cold. And of course, all the other factors, there are many problems, but I don't really care. I had a very good career in Ukraine and uh, my husband too, especially my husband. He, he had a very good career in Ukraine. and. You know, and he left it all, kind of sacrificed his career to come with me, uh, you know, to, to, to come to Jamaica. This is the city where I was born and I spent my first six years of life in Kiev before I went to Azerbaijan and then Siberia and then Mongolia and then it all started off living in different places. I don't know if I should make a video explaining how that happened that I lived in 10 countries because um, most of it is not um, like an achievement or anything it's just my parents they were moving from place to place so I kind of get got accustomed to it ah, it's so cold it's about 10 degrees Celsius minus so yeah, uh, I made this one myself, so it's nice and warm. <laughs> Look at this. In summer, it's really nice. In winter, maybe not that nice. We have these underground cities everywhere. So we're going to one of them. It's like a shopping center which is underground. Sit in there. All right. Check this out. See? It's it's really nice in there. This is one of the things I particularly like about Ukraine to have these. Oh wait, wait, wait. Yeah, we do. Unfortunately, I barely had any time to see or do anything this trip. So when I go to Ukraine in summer, I would make sure to plan some filming to give a proper picture of Kiev and places outside of the capital, because obviously one city doesn't represent the country. I'd also be happy to meet up with all Jamaicans in Ukraine who I can find. So if you are a Jamaican living in Ukraine, please get in touch with me using my email, jamaicawithirie at gmail.com. All right, guys, I'm going to do my COVID test now for Jamaica. Kiev has labs that work 24 hours, which is pretty awesome. So I'm going to one of these labs to do the test. Now, the last day in Ukraine was the very usual grey, and it was getting colder and colder. By that time, I was absolutely exhausted, and all I dreamt about was getting on a plane to get some sleep. Uh, a COVID test in Ukraine costs $10, well, $10.20. Uh, that's the antigen, 
And the PCR is somewhere around $20, so that's pretty awesome. It was so scary to take the COVID test because if it turned out it was positive, I would have been stuck in Ukraine for the New Year's Eve while all my family is in Jamaica. All right, guys, no COVID. I'm going home. Thank God. <laughs> Just... <sighs> all right, so we're coming back from Germany to Jamaica. I met these two guys. <laughs> Hi. Where are you from? Tell us more. We're from Romania, but we're currently living in Germany. And we would like to thank you for your work and for your videos on your channel because you've been a great, great, great help for us <laughs> and a great support. Where else did you think We of? saw about Cancun, uh -huh, to Mexico? but yeah, to Mexico. But I think Jamaica. Well, I hope you get a Where are you staying in Jamaica? Uh, we're gonna Bay? stay in, in Montego Bay. Bay. Yeah. In Montego Bay. Excellent. <laughs> I hope you have a fantastic trip. Thank you. Thank you. See you. I know this video is not directly relevant to Jamaica, however, I hope by watching it, people who live in Jamaica would be able to appreciate their country a little bit more. As always, special thanks to all our patrons, especially top tier patrons, for their continued support. If you'd like to join them, you can do so from only 5 US dollars per month. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Irina, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.